everybody, and welcome to New Day Northwest. Starting things off as an accomplished woman who's a longtime columnist and writer, fashion model, and swimwear designer. She just released her debut novel called The Velvet Rose, probably somewhat inspired by her real life because she also happens to be married to Duff McKagan of Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver. I've wanted her to come on this show forever, so I'm excited to introduce Susan Holmes McKagan. Hello. Hello. So good to meet you. Margaret. Was, as I told you Thanks earlier for today. Me. You've just had this kind of amazing life where you've pulled from the rock world, you write, you design, you've done this book now, you've had a long time marriage, you've raised two daughters. I don't even know how you get all this stuff done and then look like this. Thank so you. tell me a little bit about how you manage your life. Oh, well, I mean, I guess there's always finding that balance, right? Um, uh, having the discipline, um, writing a book, certainly you have to have a tremendous yep. amount of discipline. So I thrive on that. I'm, I guess, have been described as a type A personality. I think you must be, <laughs> but so, in the best kind of way because you're getting it all done. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Right back at you, coming from you. <laughs> Why, thank you. That says a tremendous amount. Thank so you. So where did you and Duff meet? Oh, my gosh. We met on an actual blind date can you believe it? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Through a mutual friend of ours, um, and he just kind of put the two and two together. He mm -hmm. thought, you know, I've known, you know, uh, Duff for many years, even before uh, Guns N' Roses, and then he knew myself and my family. And um, my sister was the first lady of her city, and he was sort of a if you will, a punk rock politician. So he knew oh, both like worlds. <laughs> and he put the two and two together. And I was new to Los Angeles and uh, living by coastal in New York and LA and modeling. And and he just thought, wow, you're, a, you know, a, a cool, I guess he thought I was a cool girl of some sorts. And he thought we would, you know, hit it off. Yeah. And, and did you right away? We did. We've been inseparable ever since. We have two <laughs> beautiful daughters and I'm just, blessed. I got a good guy and you know. And it's not easy. I mean maintaining a long marriage in the music industry in Hollywood with you know world tours and all the travel and all the rest of that and raising kids and mm. two lovely young ladies who are doing you know interesting things. I know at least of one of them who's doing a lot of music. Uh, is that a struggle? Is that harder than what we'd consider, you know, sort of the average? Or did you just approach it like anybody else would? I think whose I, husbands don't well, have first birthdays. of all. Thank you for that's that's very sweet of you. Thank you. Um, I just feel so lucky and blessed. I've got two beautiful daughters. I've got um, a wonderful husband. I, I I love a good challenge. I embrace a good challenge. Um, I'm always trying to you know drive myself to continue to learn new things and grow. And I've been working at writing for many years with the, you know, the Huffington Post columns. Right. I started out you know, with these little columns in there and then graduated to getting the coveted front page cover stories and writing for other magazines and blogs. And I really have always enjoyed having a creative outlet, whether it be from the high fashion modeling worlds. That's sort of like a uh, performance art, if you will, walking yeah, the catwalks sure. in Paris. and. And Which has got to be incredible. <laughs> I was looking at the list. You, you've walked the catwalks for Michael Kors, Donna Karen, Versace, Prada, Chanel. There was a whole this whole big list um, that you've been doing. And then obviously you were interested in design because your swimsuit company is so successful and tons of models have worn your designs on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition mm -hmm. cover. How did that get started? Were you always kind of an arty kid? I was, yeah. I actually was the president of my sewing class in high school. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's very cool. Yeah, um, and um, <laughs> I just enjoy a creative outlet. You know, as I mentioned, uh, from modeling to that in and of itself being an education, I learned I was very blessed. I got to hang out and work and do fittings, and so therefore I got to watch these brilliant and extremely talented high fashion designers right. do their craft from and you a were sketch. Paying full attention during yes, that time. from a sketch to you know picking out the fabrics and the silhouettes and the fittings and all the detail that went into that from Karl Lagerfeld and Azadine Alaya and you know Gianni Versace and and all of the greats. I'm very blessed. So what an education! It, it would be foolish to not have learned something along those lines. Right. Certainly, my collection's not near theirs, but but it's I, pretty successful <laughs> and pretty amazing. Thank you. So the Velvet Rose, I you know, echoes from maybe your own life drawn in here, yes? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, 
It is a fictitious novel, but there is a, you know, maybe perhaps a little Ramona <laughs> Clef in there. Um, the storyline, it takes place in the early 90s, and it has a lead female protagonist named Scarlett. I love the name. <laughs> love it. Aw, and um, thanks. And she, um, she's a painter and artist, creative, mm -hmm. and stumbles into the high fashion modeling worlds, and then, so the book uh, it takes you on a journey traversing through the various fashion capitals from Paris and London and New York and, um, and then she meets Johnny who is in a band on the cusp of superstardom and the band is called the Westies and it's it's just sort of um, an unhinged ride of a novel and, it, and it's all the ups and downs of dating a legendary music right. musician from uh, fame, addiction, infidelity, and all the ups and downs right. uh, in I that world. You, yeah, you really, it, when you dove into the topic of sobriety versus um, substance addiction, I know Duff wrote in his terrific memoir about his own struggles I just imagine that you had a lot of insight into all the different sides of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have witnessed and experienced and lived, unfortunately, through a lot of um, people who, who, who have passed away. It's a serious topic, you know, from Scott Weiland, Envelope Revolver, right. um, Chester Bennington, Lincoln Park, we were friends, to, um, I mean, on and on. Um, so, unfortunately, it's been a part of our journey and I've learned a lot and anything I can do to be instrumental to help anyone else out there. In fact, uh, the book Benefits Music Cares, which um, is a wonderful cause. They really truly help those who are battling addiction. Right. So, and I think the story in the book, um, it conveys, you know, sort of that coming of age, figuring out your own path and, and making mistakes and overcoming them and, you know, also, it's injected with a little humor, you know, don't beat yourself up if you mess up. And, you know, it, you can return is, to the path. Yes. A and that, I think, is part of the conversation we need. I mean, we've done a lot of segments on this show where we would call them stigma to hope, where we talk about mental illness or substance abuse and people overcoming them. And every story that kind of injects that with the humanity of how people find themselves there, I think, helps us remove judgment and remove shame from it and kind of explore what happens next you know, when you go through mm. with your life. So, okay, one of the things we wanted to ask you, because yes. you always look fantastic <laughs> and have this oh. kind of rocker chic look down cold, <laughs> we wanted to get Thank some fashion you. advice. So Is there sweet. anything in particular you've told your daughters or recommended to them in terms of putting looks together? Oh, okay. Um, sure. I mean, I've uh, had a wonderful past few years especially, I've gotten to go on and, you know, tag along in the Guns N' yes. Roses tour. It's not too shabby. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not too bad. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think, it, gosh, it was almost three years, 49 countries and oh 152 goodness. shows. So you can imagine the amount of packing and unpacking right. and things I may have learned to not only feel good, but to you know, hopefully look good a little bit al along this way too. And you know, there's these all these fashionable cities we get to go to. So for me, I like to kind of double down. So that means, so some of my go-to tips on style would be, um, well, I love a good classic white sneaker because I wear mm -hmm. a lot of solid colors, all black. So it kind of- oh, Interesting. So <laughs> there's one where oh, you've done yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. So cute. I mean, the white sneaker is good. It goes with a lot of different things. And I notice you mi mix hats in a lot, too, which oh, sometimes yeah, we're I not brave hats. enough to do. do. Like hats, too. <laughs> I, I always feel like I might look goofy at it, really? like not brave enough. But I think, look at this. So I've been looking at how you've done it. And I thought, well, why not? If I just had the confidence to pop it on, I'd probably be fine. So you like the white sneakers. You like the hats. And yes. you also like a good scarf. Absolutely. I like a good scarf because not only can you tie it around your neck, but you can tie it in your hair, you're having a bad hair day, <laughs> you're reading a book and maybe, you know, my hubby's falling asleep and I don't want to have this bright light in the hotel, drape it over the lamp. I mean, it's very functional. That's a very good idea. And fashionable. So a very good idea. <laughs> it comes in handy. So what have the tours been like, I mean, at this, at this point to have had that happen before and then for Guns N' Roses to come back, reform? and have these tremendously successful tours. I've been to three of the shows. <laughs> yes, you have to come to more. We I'd love when you're there, to come Margaret. To more. It's so I'd fun. I mean, what is that like for you managing your business and your family? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It's not like, woo, it's just so easy breezy because it requires a 
you know, a ton of discipline, right. but that I thrive on that. A lot with you. I think that's an important lesson for the rest of mm. us because it always kind of looks easy work. from the outside yes. and then you need yeah. to know that it's hard work it and is. discipline that, that gives you this. Thank you so much for doing this, for coming here, for also for giving the benefits um, to Music Cares and from the book. And please stop by and see me tonight. I have information about that right now. Oh. Susan is going to discuss and sign copies of The Velvet Rose this evening from 5 to 6 at Third Place Books in Seward Park in Seattle. We've linked all the information you need online. We'll put it up on our social media today, too. Thank you again. It was Thank lovely to you, meet Margaret. you. Really appreciate so it. See you. So when we come back, Wellness Wednesday begins with some helpful suggestions for healthy and safe travel with kids. We'll be back with that right after this.